Bicycle highways seem like something out of the Jetsons. I mean, just take a look at some of these concept photos. Absolutely nuts. Some of them are entirely enclosed or 20 feet off the ground to take in panoramic views. Others wind their way from city to city through the countryside. They look a heck of a lot nicer than a car highway. It may seem like a fantasy, but some of these roads are real or are being built right now. But it's not all champagne and roses. There's a lot of roadblocks to having these ideas become reality. But it's possible that bike highways could solve looming environmental and engineering problems. But is it probable? It might surprise you that the first bike highway wasn't in Europe. In the 1890s, America was absolutely enamored with the bicycle. For around 20 years, the U.S. was at the forefront of global bicycle infrastructure. Pasadena mayor and wealthy businessman Horace Dobbins first proposed a bicycle highway in the United States that would connect Los Angeles to Pasadena. It would be elevated off the ground and actually looks remarkably similar to the current bike highways in Germany and the Netherlands. The Los Angeles Cycle Highway was proposed in 1896 and was under construction by 1900, but only 1.3 miles were ever constructed. I have concluded that we are a little ahead of our time on this cycleway. Wheelmen have not evidenced enough interest in it, Dobbins complained in the Los Angeles Times. Unfortunately for cycle infrastructure around the country, the car had come. The Model T came out in 1908, and by 1910, the highway was torn down. But for that brief period, Los Angeles was the biking capital of the US. Bicycles, these grand inventions of the Victorian era, were literally sidelined to pathways on the side of the road. That means that the bikers are at the mercy of cars and trucks. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, 857 bicyclists were killed in motor vehicle traffic crashes in 2018. That's part of where the idea for modern bicycle highways comes in. Bike highways differ from regular bike lanes because they're entirely separate from roads. They don't have just a few feet of greenery or even a concrete barrier. Part of the requirement for being a bike highway is that they are 100% divorced from car roads. They also don't permit motorized vehicles like mopeds, motorcycles, or e-bikes with speeds over 45 kilometers per hour, or pedestrians. They're designed for commuting, not simply leisure. One of the most ambitious and earliest bike highways is in Germany. Fully completed, it will stretch 62 miles and connect 10 cities and four universities. It's expected to get 50,000 cars off the road every day. It will also have an associated annual reduction of 16,000 tons of CO2 emissions, according to the regional association Ruhr. The final stretch was opened in 2015. But the Renault Pad is a different breed. It's 11 miles of race cycling highway that traverses the countryside between Arnhem and Nijmegen. The 20-foot high, 12-foot wide path is arguably one of the best in the world. But you might be thinking, damn, that must be expensive. While it required a 700 million euro dedication to get off the ground, it's actually not that bad. The entire Netherlands biking infrastructure costs Dutch citizens just 30 euros a year. Even London is trying to get in on the action. Architect Norman Foster unveiled his plan for the East-West Cycle Superhighway, a plan which the city of London is planning to spend 900 million euros on. It would traverse from Acton in West London to Barking in the East, almost 18 miles of raised paths. In places with bike highways, there are reports that a bike highway commute can take less time than a car commute due to rush hour traffic. Biking instead of driving is also proven to improve physical and mental health and increase happiness. But the bike highway is a harder sell in the US, with some notable exceptions, like Portland, the number one biking city in the US is taking a unique approach to the bike highway. An approach that could be a blueprint for other US cities. Portland piggybacked bike-friendly and traffic calming measures onto stormwater runoff treatments in its Green Streets program. It combines a very popular building trend in the US, environmentally friendly construction, 
with another environmentally friendly thing that people aren't quite as jazzed about, biking. They're actually poised to spend $600 million on bicycle infrastructure over the next 20 years, with a goal of upping the cycling rate to 25%. Bike highways have the potential to be a staple form of transportation in Europe. But in the US, obstacles are steep. European cities have been working on bike infrastructure since the 1970s. And experts say that the US didn't get to the same place until 2007. So it's not that it's impossible. We're just a few decades behind. I guess that's what we get for quitting while we were ahead in the 1900s. Do you like to bike? Let us know in the comments and make sure you turn into Who Knew Wednesdays at 8 p.m. We'll see you next time.